What's up, everybody? I'm your host, I say the Duke of Tears. Welcome to Fireside Chats. Just wanted to say peace to all the human families of planet Earth. Everybody that's going through something, may you get through it. Um, it's a beautiful day. Uh, I was going through stuff and I was noticing a lot of things on uh, social media. I like to kind of peruse and see what's going on, what's the trending, what's topics. And um, one of the biggest things that's going on now is uh, what's the difference between uh, um, uh, Muslims, let's say, and Muslims. You know, I get that a lot, being that uh, as a Moorish American or more of the empire, I uh, refer to myself also as a Muslim, what that means. A Muslim is somebody who descends from what the Quran refers to as the al bayat which represent the people of the house. The uh, clan of Il and Bay, who precede the onset of the religion of Islam that came in to replace the draconian Roman law uh, at the fall of Rome uh, towards the end of the 6th century, moving into the 7th. Once that happened, there was a consolidation of original so called uh, members of the original uh, family who collectively were referred to as Mohammedans, M-O-H-A-M-M-E-D. And these Mohammedans were of the family of the Prophet. These are the people who actually laid down the uh, Islamic trust at Medina at 622 AD. These were also the founders of the Abbasid, uh, the Ab who came out of the Abyssinian, part of them came out of the Abyssinian Empire, being that one half of the Prophet's family, peace, uh, Muhammad, be upon him his family was from Abyssinia and uh, his mother was from the satellite kingdom of Abyssinia at that time which was called Sabia or also Nabatia in what we now today call Yemen anyway uh, so basically the Mohammedan nation comprised of the blood heirs of the prophet going all the way back now to pre-islamic times going into all the way back to the flood of Gilgamesh, the personage that the people in the Bible call Noah. Now, a Muslim is someone who is of the religious faith of uh, Muhammad and who follows the Sunnah specifically, which is nothing wrong with that, you know what I mean? Uh, some, mo most Muslims I know make Salat in the prostrating form, whereas a lot of Muslims or Moors I know when they make a lot, they do it in the customary right over left standing up. It's just a difference in custom, and those of us who are from the Saracen side, meaning the sons of Sarah, who was the first wife of Abraham, of the original so-called stock of the uh, original uh, Asiatic uh, so-called black original man, original woman. Um, and then you have the Hagarenes, the people today we would call Arabs, or who have a, a what we'll call a Arabic tone phenotype, those are the sons of Hagar, also known as Hagarin. So we're cousins, but we're a little different. So sheiks in Saudi Arabia, when they wear the tifan or the, the shilha, right, they'll wear it like this, but they won't have the tassel. You see what I'm saying? So having the tassel is also reminiscent of the uh, original tribe of Kord Esh being that the Moors have free reign 720 degrees around the planet. So what that got me doing the knowledge to is the fact that everybody in the so-called invisible empire, which is the, the Union Society of States, the clan organizations that have been running this country through terrorism since uh, after the Civil War, uh, they are hell bent on preserving what little they have left of this so-called occupation of the Maghreb, which is the North, Central, and South America. Uh, being someone in the empire now, I'm looking at it from a different perspective. So what I see or we see as racism and police brutality, these are all just incremental attacks on the very fabric of the American strata. And the truth that America as a country or a quote-unquote world empire was always influenced by uh, true or original Islam based upon the fact that most of the so-called tribes that we call Cherokee, Panahasua, Patuan, Ben Ishmael, Melungi, and whatever, most of these were descendants from those Moors who uh, were expatriated after the empire fell in Granada. 
Another misconception is that after 1492, everything went downhill. Well, that happened for a lot of us over here, but on the other side of the world, we had a great expansion in which now most of the known world came under the jurisdiction of the old empire. So once we started to see our power waning here, we had to set up certain things to be able to get it back in the future. That's why one of the oral statements of the prophet was that the European is the secret protector of Islam, which is why they wear their fezes and turbans as shriners in secret, because the secret is when you, whoever's wearing the, the, the hat, the shriner hat with the sword above it, the name on the top represents the Moor or the Moorish family or dynasty that owned the person wearing it. That's why we as Moors not supposed to wear no fez or nothing with markings on it. That's another difference between a Muslim and a Muslim. So as a Muslim who's strict Sunnah, I only deal with that. So there's an element of me who would be somewhat cut off from that because as a Moor, I understand that as my people predated all religion, we are the manifestation of Shu Allah, which is on leg, leg, arm, head. So I can mix my salat, but then at the same time, uh, go and have some Chinese food, or do yoga, you know, or uh, speak Russian, or you know what I mean, go and have a, a statue of uh, Ganesha or, or Ra, you know what I mean, for my altar without being an idol worshiper because all of these are manifestations of Allah when you understand the true and living God and what that is as a Moor or let's say as a Muslim, as one of the people of the house. So what I also did the knowledge and do in digging, all of these people are going crazy about Muslims and they're scared that Sharia law and all this is taking over, but I did some research and found out that one, I had to write it down so I wouldn't forget, one that in case you didn't notice, the majority of the hierarchy in the United States right now are all Muslims. Meaning that uh, you basically have a Muslim government already, is what I'm saying. How can we prove that? Well, Joe Brennan, the current head of the CIA, converted to Islam when he was stationed in Saudi Arabia. Obama's top advisor, Valerie, Valerie Jarrett, is a Muslim who was born in Iran, <laughs> which is crazy, where her parents are still live. Hillary Clinton's top advisor, Huma uh, Abdin, is a Muslim whose mother and brother are still involved in the now outlawed Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Now, quick history, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt was founded back in 1933 between 1933 and 1935 by a guy named the Mufti of Berlin, who was actually a Khazarian Jew who came under the jurisdiction of uh, some Moors from the Saudi family, Saud family, and then trained him in Islam, and then they worked as a military occupation to get rid of the so-called Khazarian Jews to stop them from setting up the state. So, uh, he was recently outed by the Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel for giving Hitler the idea for the final solution. Uh, the Mufti of Berlin was also co-opted eventually by the OSS, which became the CIA in the United States, and brought a lot of them over here. They then, in the 50s and uh, after the coup in Iran, set up the Mujahideen, which then led to the establishment of Al-Qaeda, which then led to the establishment of the Taliban, which then led to the establishment of ISIS, which then now led to the establishment of what they call ISIL, right, etc. The Assistant Secretary for Policy, Development, and Homeland Security, Arif Khan, is a Muslim. <laughs> Homeland Security Advisor Mohammed Elibari is a Muslim. <laughs> Obama's advisor and founder of the Muslim Public Affairs Council, Salam al Marayat is a Muslim. Obama's uh, Sharia czar, I Imam Mohammed Majid, is from the Islamic Society of North America, is a Muslim. The Advisory Council of Faith-Based Neighborhood Parent Partnerships, Ibu Patel, is a Muslim. Nancy Pelosi announced that she will appoint Representative Andre Carson, Democrat, who is a Muslim, the first Muslim lawmaker in the House of Representatives ever. Uh, he would make the first, he would, this guy Carson would be the first Muslim to serve on a committee that receives intelligence on Islamic threats. Look at that. So everybody beefing about all of this, but your man Keith Ellis sworn in on a Quran. They just sworn another judge woman on a translated Quran. So we're gonna get into the next part of that in the next thing as we expound more on the Muslim and Muslim thing because I went into that tirade to let you know that there's a historical precedent in which now the so-called invisible empire, breakaway society, or whatever are uh, working to diligently reverse what's already in play. 
So again, peace to the Moors, long live the empire, know yourself, love your God, whoever that is, and uh, on part two, we'll expound more on that part. Peace.